Recently, I've gotten a few requests to give a sermon on how to use a missal in, in some detail, how to follow along in the Mass. And this is a very good question, both because people should follow the Mass and their missal to see the prayers that are being prayed in the church, or by the church, and which they offer to God by their presence at Mass. And it's also a good question because the rules that determine what readings and prayers are said in Mass are a little bit complicated. Actually, all of the rules of the liturgical year are, are extremely complicated. They've been refined over the centuries by many generations of popes and bishops with the guidance of the Holy Ghost. It's only fitting that the various feasts of, of our Lord and Our Lady and the saints throughout the year should be ordered to each other in a system that keeps their, their relative dignity as carefully as possible. In the old days before Vatican II, there would be a few priests in every diocese who were experts in all of the rules of the liturgical year, experts on all these different types of feasts and, and what happens when two feasts land on the same day, for example, and what prayers are supposed to be said every day, and so on. And, and they would devote a significant part of their life to the study of all of these rules. And what they would do was to write a little uh, cheat sheet for all the, the other priests of the diocese, which would be called an ordo, which had very concise instructions for every day of the year. And it just told the priest which prayers to say in Mass and the breviary so that he wouldn't have to spend all this time working through the rules. They got a couple of geniuses to figure it out for everyone else. And fortunately, today we still have a few devoted people who put in these long hours of study and research to, to write this schedule of prayers for each day, every year. Just one more way that God has provided for the church in, in these difficult times that we're in. He's still giving us people who can navigate these, these beautiful but complicated rules to help, to help us poor priests say the right prayers at Mass. I want to emphasize that the liturgical year is not complicated because the Church likes to make it complicated. Rather, it's, it's the work of the Holy Ghost. And the longer any priest says Mass and the prayers of the breviary, the more familiar he becomes with all of these rules, I think the more he sees the wisdom and the careful balance in the way that these rules of the liturgy honor both God and the saints, and they give just the right amount and the right type of honor to, to the saints and to God on every day of the year. It really is, the whole system is very, very beautiful. But don't be intimidated by all of this. I'm not going to get bogged down too much in, in the details, all I'm going to do is give you the basic general rules that will give you the, the correct results for at least 90% of the days every year. It's actually not hard to get a good working understanding of the whole system, and that's all, all we really need. If you want to look in your missile as I'm explaining this, it'll probably be a little bit helpful. I'm going to refer to a lot of different things in, in your missiles. But to begin with, there are two basic divisions in the liturgical year. There is the proper of the time, also called the proper of the season, and there's the proper of the saints. They're like two schedules of feasts running through the year at the same time. And in most missiles, the proper of the time takes up about the first half of the missile, and the proper of the saints is in the second half. The proper of the time means the feasts and the liturgical seasons that celebrate our Lord's life on earth. It begins with Advent at the beginning of December, and then it has the Christmas season, the Epiphany, it has Lent, Easter time, and then the time after Pentecost, which ends when the next Advent <laughs> begins that December and the whole process starts over. That's the proper of the time. The proper of the saints is a much simpler concept. 
That just means that almost every day in the year is assigned to honor some saint. For example, June 16th is assigned to honor Saint Ubald. That's his feast day. About roughly 90% of the, of the dates of every year, maybe a little more, are the feast of some saint or another. And any date that doesn't have a saint assigned to it is called a ferial day. That's an important term. And on a ferial day, usually the Mass that is said on that day is the same as the Mass of the previous Sunday. The Mass of every day in the year is taken from one or the other of these two concurrent schedules. So how do you know which one it's going to be from? Well, the vast majority of the time, the Mass of Sunday is taken from the proper of the time, and the Mass of every other day in the week is from the proper of the saints. But the easiest way to find this out on any particular day, if you're not sure, is to look at your traditional Catholic calendar. Look at that particular day, and that'll tell you. It'll say either the 27th Sunday after Pentecost, well, there's no 27th Sunday after Pentecost, but the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, that's today. If it's a Sunday, or it'll say today is the Feast of Saint uh, the Saint, and then, then that's how you know what the Mass is going to be of. Or if you forget to look at your calendar, you can look at the bulletin when you get to church and see what, what it says for the current day. Now, occasionally, a, a very high-ranking feast will fall on a Sunday, and the Sunday Mass will be of that feast rather than of the proper of the time, according to the rules that I was talking about. But again, if you look at the bulletin, you'll see that on Sunday, it'll say today is the feast of, of uh, like an apostle, for example, would be a saint that would override the Sunday. But, and then you'll know that it's the masses of, of the apostle and not the Sunday. So that's how you know where to look for the mass of the day. Now, some of the prayers in mass are always the same every day, like the prayers in the offertory and the canon. And there are other, other prayers or readings that change from day to day. Those are called the variable parts of the Mass. But you'll notice that the variable parts of the Mass, like the introit and the collect, the offertory verse, and so on, they all come together like in one package. They're all printed on the same page, if you look at any, any uh, Mass in your Missal. They're all connected. So today is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, if you look that up in your Missal you'll see that all the variable parts of the Mass are printed on in that same section. So when the priest gets to any of those variable parts in the ceremony, you'll always turn back to that same page and find, uh, find the correct reading there. So Sundays are pretty straightforward in that regard, as far as where to find the variable parts of the Mass. But for people who come during the week, there's a little bit more to know, which is about uh, common masses for the saints. So the saints in the calendar are grouped into several categories. There are apostles, martyrs, bishops, confessors, virgins, and widows. Some saints fall into more than one category, obviously, a virgin and martyr, for example. Um, but for each one of these categories, the church has what are basically like pre-packaged masses that it uses for most of them, and that's called the common of the saints. After the section in your missal uh, for the proper of the saints, you'll, all, you'll see the next section probably is called the common of the saints, and you'll see that there are several masses in each of these categories for saints that I mentioned. By, by a mass, I mean a collection of an introit, a collect, a gospel, um, and so on. All the movable parts of the mass, they're all printed together. And they're used together in the same mass. So what the church did was to compose several masses, several collections of these movable parts, for each category of saint. 
so that on a typical day in the year, rather than having a, a unique uh, collection of, of uh, these readings for every single saint in the year, the missal would be three times the size that it is now if, if the church did that. Rather than do that, on most uh, saint, uh, feasts of saints, it just uses one of these pre-packaged masses in the back from the common of the saints. So you might turn to your missal for June 18th, for example. That's the feast of St. Ephraim of Syria. And uh, it'll say in that, for that saint, it'll say something like, the Mass is from such and such page, except for the following prayers. And what that means is that all of the movable parts of the Mass are from the page that it refers you to, the Gospel and the Epistle and so on, with the exception of the Collect, the secret prayer at the end of the offertory and the post-communion prayer, those are printed under June 18th. Now, speaking of the collects or the prayers of the day, this is probably the trickiest and most complicated part of the Mass every day. And most of the questions that people have asked me were about something having to do with the collects. So first of all, there are three places in the Mass where prayers are said that are specific to that day. There are the prayers that are said before the Epistle. Those are called the Collects. Then there are the prayers before the Preface, which the priest says silently. Those are called the Secret Prayers. And lastly, there are prayers that are said after the Communion verse. Um, after the distribution of communion, immediately after that, there is uh, a verse of, of scripture, which is a communion verse, and then there are the post-communion prayers after that. You'll see those terms in, in your Missal. Now, every Mass in the Missal has its own set of the Collect, the secret prayer, and the post-communion prayer. You can almost think of, of these three prayers as maybe one continuous prayer that is spread out over three parts in the Mass. It's not written in that sense grammatically, but the, the, the three prayers are very closely connected. And they're all related. They're all of the same uh, saint or the same mystery. So they have, they're very tightly connected. But there are usually several of these prayers that are said at Mass, and there are a few reasons for that. The first collect that is said in Mass is always the, the prayer of the Mass itself. For example, the Mass today, the fourth Sunday of Pente after Pentecost, the first collect will be of the, first Sunday, or the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Then, if there is another saint being celebrated on that day, there will, the second collect will be of that saint. So the second prayer in Mass is of St. John of St. Facundo. And then there are two saints that have feast days on June 12th today, of course, primarily is St. John of St. Facundo. And then after him, there is St. Basilides and Companions. So their prayer is said in the third place in Mass today. <clears throat> the church doesn't want saints to be forgotten just because they happen to fall on a Sunday. This is one of the beautiful ways in which the liturgy uh, sort of balances all of the all the, the the feast days on a single day. So first there's the Sunday and then other saints that, that fell on that day. And then when you get to the secret prayers in Mass, the first secret prayer will be of the Sunday, the second one will be of St. John, and the third one will, will be of St. Basilides. The prayers are always said in the same order. And then the post-communion prayers will be the same. So someone might wonder, well, how do I know if there is some saint whose prayer is going to be said after the prayer of the Mass? How do I know if that's going to be said and, and which prayer it's going to be? Again, you'll see on your calendar at home or in the bulletin, the name of a saint written maybe under or next to the main saint or feast day of the day. That means that that saint is commemorated and his prayer is said uh, after the prayer of the Mass. 
So I hope this is not too confusing, but people have said to me also, but what is that last prayer that you say? You, you said this other prayer in Mass today that I had no idea where you got it. Okay, the Church likes to have three prayers in each Mass. Not all the time, but it's sort of a default setting. Three collects, three secret prayers, three post-communions. Three is, is a symbolic number. It's the number of perfection, the number of the Trinity. And the Church wants to say several prayers during this time of grace, during the Holy Sacrifice, because the Church knows that that is the most fruitful time for us to present our request to God. So, so three prayers is better than one. Now, when there's no saint occurring on the same day, to fill the second or third slot. So let's say there's only, it's a weekday, it's just the feast of some saint and nobody else. He gets the, the first, his prayer is said first. What do we do for the second and third prayers? The church has several general prayers that it uses to fill those places. Uh, it has, um, there are prayers to ask for the intercession of Our Lady and the saints. Um, there's a prayer to honor the Holy Ghost. There's a prayer to ask for God's protection on his church. And there's a couple of others, too. If you use the Father Lassant's Missal, which is a very good, very thorough Missal, and I think that seems to be the most popular Missal here, look in the section after the... You'll see the ordinary of the Mass in the middle, and then there will be a section of the proper prefaces right after that, Immediately after the section of the proper prefaces, you'll see these prayers in that section, along with an explanation of which ones are said when. It'll give you all the, everything you want to know about these, these general prayers that are, are said also um, to fill the, the, the empty spaces. <coughs> but those prayers are not said every day. On feasts that are of somewhat higher rank, uh, specifically feasts that are of double rank or higher. That means feasts that are written as a double or double major or double of the first or second class. These prayers are not said. There's only one collect said on those days. And we see the wisdom of the church in this, that the church gives us fewer prayers on feasts that are of, of somewhat higher rank, higher dignity, because the church knows that that'll actually make us focus more deeply on that one prayer and, and meditate on it with greater attention. And it's th that's a, a logical and a fitting thing to do on a, a feast of, of greater solemnity. If anyone is interested in, in any of the, the more details of this, just uh, feel free to ask me outside of Mass. As you might have noticed, I, I find this whole subject very interesting. I'd be happy to explain it in, in more detail to anyone that's curious. So as I said, all of this covers about 90% of the Masses every day in the year. The only other movable parts are the Gloria, which is said after the Kyrie, and the, the Nicene Creed. The Gloria is said on every feast day. It's also said every single day between Easter and Pentecost. So that's most of the days every year. It's not said on Sundays during Lent or Advent because it's a hymn of joy and it wouldn't be suited to the Sundays during a time of penance. Obviously, it's also not said during ferial days uh, either in, in Lent or, or at any other time in the year. As far as the Nicene Creed, that is said every Sunday. And it's also said generally on feasts of greater solemnity, like any feast of our Lord or Our Lady. It's also said on feasts of saints who help to spread the gospel, because those saints taught the truths that we profess in the Creed. So that means that it's said on feasts of the apostles, the evangelists, and also the doctors of the church. Interestingly enough, it's also said on the feast of St. Mary Magdalene because she, in a sense, brought the faith to the apostles because she was the one who told them that our Lord had risen.
The Divine Liturgy is our most important function here on earth, and, and the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is the crown jewel of all of the prayers that the Church offers to God. So we see an enormous amount of care and attention on the part of the Church and the guidance of the Holy Ghost, too, in making sure that the prayers that are said in the Mass give the greatest possible honor to God and his saints while maintaining their hierarchy. Just as the saints themselves in heaven are organized in, in a vast hierarchy according to their worthiness before God. And the composition of the Mass is truly a masterpiece of beauty and it's an immense treasure. The more we learn about the Mass, the more we will love it the more we will detest what heretics have done to it in the last few decades. But we reject what, what these heretics have done to the Mass, and we cling to the Mass of all time, because only thus can we save our souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.